Hi and welcome to the Creation Cryptids podcast where we give God the glory for his creation. I just want to do a quick podcast today because an interesting um, topic came to my attention that is the fairly recent discovery of a new primate. Uh, new primate species discoveries are not very frequent. Uh, obviously when we're thinking about smaller creatures like insects that, that's fairly regular but to find a new primate is uh is is quite amazing and this happened in December 2003 so going back uh 21 odd years now but um it was interesting in 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 if we relate this to Bigfoot Sasquatch research is it's a new primate it's discovered in a country that is is fairly well explored and um what's interesting is this creature was Doubted by scientists or the more skeptical scientists because the native reports, the local tribe kind of gave it partly, you know, animal description, also mythological description. So again, as often happens in pagan societies, you get perfectly normal animals, but then supernatural things are ascribed to them, etc. They become part of folklore. And thus, you know, secular Western scientists kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater because they think, well, no, this is just some made up supernatural creature, which is um, not wanting to go down a rabbit trail. But I'd say that's why dragons are dismissed is because dragons are thought of as a mythological folklore when we well know there were large reptiles in the past and still around today. Won't go further into that one today, but um, just to say that, you know, this is a relevant to me to Bigfoot and Sasquatch research because they found this animal was real in 2000, late 2003, early 2004. Two independent uh, studies, investigations found a monkey called the Kipunji in the uh, forested highlands of Tanzania, central Tanzania. Again, fairly well explored country to find this new primate, which is in the same family as baboons and drills and mandrills and mangabees. So it's a, a kind of baboon-like monkey, if you would say it that way, with a interesting pelage. Um, is 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 very interesting and pertinent to me, to, to Bigfoot and Sasquatch. And in fact, Yeti and any unknown bipedal primate um, research, because people dismiss Bigfoot and Sasquatch because they say, well, you know, it's in folklore. Some people say it's supernatural, this and that and that. And, you know, America's well explored. There's not going to be anything um, found there now, not something that's eight foot tall and covered in hair. And though the Kapunji is not eight foot tall, it it uh, was well known to the local people. It was in a highlands area of a fairly well-known nation. <clears throat> I don't think there's any particularly dark and mysterious corners of Tanzania that haven't been explored, not like kind of the impenetrable Congo Basin, um, if you keep on going further west. But it was found and discovered. And listen, North America has plenty of wilderness that if no one's ever set foot there, then they do not go there regularly. Canada, even more so. Vast wilderness areas where probably people have never stepped or nobody beyond um, somebody who's native or Inuit or one of those tribes. So what I'm saying is um, we shouldn't dismiss Bigfoot because we think, oh, well, it's mythological. We shouldn't dismiss it because it's in a country that has been pretty well explored. And we shouldn't dismiss it by saying, well, we're not going to find any more primates these days because the Kapunji of Tanzania will tell you we can. We can find new primates, uh, that, that fit within, you know, existing, how they say in our tribe, I'm not really a fan, I think tribe belongs to the human sphere and shouldn't be used in animal taxonomy, but anyway, <clears throat> belongs to, uh, you know, the tribe that includes baboons and mandrills and drills and mangabees. And if we find a Bigfoot and find out that it's in the tribe of what I believe, gibbons, that we could be looking at a giant terrestrial gibbon that gets so big that it can't live in the trees anymore and therefore there's some intelligent adaptation there where it's its arms are not quite as long as a gibbon its uh bipedal locomotion is even better 
and uh, just to get all the calories into that large frame, it's it's become omnivorous. But again, I point to Bigfoot and Sasquatch having very gibbon-like vocalizations. Towards that, I point to their bipedalism, uh, which is amongst the apes. The gibbon is the best walker. So again, um, why is it beyond reason that uh, a member of the gibbon family, albeit a giant one, which maybe has some more quote-unquote advanced traits than the gibbon, can exist, even in a country where we think we've found all the animals and where we might not even expect to find a primate. So that's just an interesting um, analogy. I don't know what you call it, analogy, corollary, whatever, um, story that kind of, to, in my mind, matches up to Bigfoot Sasquatch a bit, which is um, primate, thought to be real by some, mythological by others, being discovered in, in recent times. Just a short one today, but please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment if you know anything about the Kapunji or you've got any opinions about what I said today, whatever they are, where well, you're very welcome to leave a comment and I will reply if I can. All right, catch you next time on Creation Cryptid.